Let's look at some examples of molecular shapes. We'll start with the VSEPR, the valence shell electron pair repulsion of the groups around a central atom. We'll count up the number of lone pairs and the number of bonded atoms around a central atom to determine the overall shape. Let's look at some examples. Here's carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide has steric number two, and I determine that from the Lewis dot structure. Now it's absolutely critical to get the Lewis dot structure correct because that will tell you where the lone pairs and where the bonded atoms are. And it will determine the steric number. Here I've drawn the 16 electron system of carbon dioxide. I haven't drawn the full Lewis electron dot structure. There's electrons, as you know, around these oxygens, but it's the central atom. I'm interested in here. This central atom, carbon, has a steric number of two. Two things to accommodate around it. Notice it's not four. We don't talk about the number of bonds. We talk about the number of atoms that I have to accommodate. So steric number of two, that's going to lead to a linear arrangement. How do I fit two things as far away from each other as possible? 180 degrees. Another example, boron dichloride with a positive charge. Three things, steric number two around the central atom, linear arrangement. What about three things? There's some examples like boron trifluoride. Well, three things have a trigonal arrangement. The way to arrange three things in space with the greatest separation is at the vertices of a right tri of a equilateral triangle, 120 degree bond angles. So boron trifluoride is an example, as well as ethylene. The carbons in ethylene each have steric number three. This carbon has to accommodate one, two, three things. This carbon also accommodates one, two, three things. All the bond angles in this molecule are 120 degrees. Interestingly, this molecule is also planar. All the, all the atoms lie in one plane with bond angles of 120 degrees. We can keep going. Steric number four, ammonium ion is an example, and water is an example. Steric number four, if you recall, is a tetrahedral arrangement, not a square planar but a tetrahedral arrangement in space. Tetrahedral angle is 109.5. That's how to put four things as far away from each other in space. So ammonia, the nitrogen, has steric number four, this ammonium ion with one, two, three, four hydrogens around it. The oxygen in water, steric number four, one, two hydrogens and one, two lone pairs. Now, steric number four for both of these, but Ammonia we call a tetrahedral molecule. Water we actually don't call tetrahedral, we just call a bent molecule. The reason is we only talk about the atomic centers when we're naming the shape of the molecule. This molecule is bent. These lone pairs don't factor in to our structure of the molecule. They influence it, but when we name the structure we just call that bent, referring only to the atoms. Now this bent molecule, this bond angle, is actually a little less than the 109.5 of true tetrahedral. That's because these lone pairs can be held very closely to the oxygen, and they can have a greater steric interaction with these two hydrogens, squishing those hydrogens a little closer together than the 109.5. In fact, this bond angle is closer to 105 degrees. 104.5 is usually the bond angle reported for water. We can go to steric number five. If we go to steric number five, trigonal bipyramidal is the name of the VSEPR shape with two bond angles to account for, 90 degrees and 120 degrees. Two different positions. The axial positions, 180 degrees from each other, and the equatorial positions, 120 degrees from each other. An example? PCL5. Phosphorus has steric number 5 in PCL5. It's a trigonal bipyramidal molecule. That's quite a mouthful, but you can practice saying that trigonal bipyramidal. Now, another trigonal bipyramidal arrangement of things, lone pairs and atoms, is IF3. In this case, two of the things are lone pairs. So this molecule, like water, has a trigonal bipyramidal arrangement of electron pairs, but we call this molecule, we name it, ignoring 
the electron pairs. Knowing the electron pairs, that molecule looks T-shaped. In fact, it's a little bit of a bent T because these two electron pairs, again, will squish down, have a greater steric interaction, and squish down those two fluorines, creating kind of a bent T, these angles less than 90 degrees. Now, it's interesting. You might say, well, why didn't I take those two lone pairs and put them in the axial positions rather than the equatorial positions? Well, if I do put them in the axial positions, what I end up with is a lone pair here, a lone pair here, and three fluorines around the equator. But that gives me many more 90 degree lone pair, bond pair interactions. And those are very sterically bad. The 90 degree lone pair, bond pair arrangements we want to minimize in our structures. So this is a better arrangement of Five things, two lone pairs, three atoms. We can go to steric number six. Steric number six will have an octahedral configuration. And remember, it's octahedral because this shape is an octahedron, which has eight sides but six vertices. So six vertices, each position identical, 90 degree bond angles between all of them. Some examples, SF6, sulfur hexafluoride, that's steric number six around the fluorine, each fluorine, each fluorine identical, steric number six around the sulfur, each fluorine identical. Or xenon tetrafluoride, again steric number six, but this case two of the items are lone pairs. And in this case they are arranged axially, and they give an overall shape to xenon tetrafluoride of square planar. So finally, we get to a truly square planar molecule after all these travels through our molecular shapes. So molecular shape determined by a good Lewis dot structure that gives you the steric number, looking at VSEPR shapes, and then looking at the bonded electrons and the electron pairs. So we have bonded atoms that determine the overall shape. We have, when we have bonded atoms and lone pairs, we ignore the lone pairs and name the shape based on bonded atoms alone. That's how we do shapes of molecules and molecular geometry.